What is up, guys? It is Zach Ploche, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you an introduction to web scraping with Python. So let's get into it. I'm going to share my screen, and we're going to build an extremely simple web scraping project. So I'm going to create a new folder, call it web scraping training, right click, open that with VS Code. And we're going to build this pretty simply. So I'm going to open up this file here. We're going to make a new file called main.py. You can name it whatever, but uh, normally that's what I call the main file in a folder. So this is going to require two pretty simple packages. So the first one is going to be pip install requests. And then right after that, we're also going to be using beautiful soup for. So we're going to type in BS4 for the second one. So pip install requests and BS4. And actually, so I'm making sure I'm doing this in the right place. I'm going to create a virtual environment. And now I'm going to pip install uh, requests and BS4. So now that those are installed, let's go ahead and import those. And uh, let's start with only the requests object. So import requests. And um, at first, we need to get a specific uh, web pages HTML. All right, so we're going to pick a URL. Um, in this tutorial, I'm going to be clicking, uh, we're going to be using a real URL. So um, so like some people like to use these websites built for web scraping. Let's do one that's a bit less commonly uh, shown on these tutorial type videos. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say HTTPS. And uh, first, let's just open up the browser and see what web page we're going to. And I already did this off the screen. so. Uh, this is a Steam profile. So this is mine, a sneak attack Zach, my name. And uh, so I used to live in Vegas, so that's why this is here. But we're going to go here. And uh, because this is a pretty basic Steam profile page, we're going to go to this website and scrape something like this because I believe most Steam profiles are pretty publicly accessible. Uh, now, let's see. So HTTPS, yep, all of that good stuff. So yeah, we'll just copy this link paste it inside of here, bleep, 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 bleep. like so. And now all we're going to do to get a response, which is going to store all of the HTML from our page here, is say requests.get and pass in the URL. So let's go ahead and run this. And actually, we're going to say print response. And let's see what happens once we grab the response from this request.get. Uh, so let's go ahead and press play. All right, so we got a response 200. Uh, so if you're new to what the different response codes are, response 200 means that essentially your request to that web page worked. Um, if you get a something like a 400 error or something like this, uh, that would cause um, that. That just means that the either you went to a web page that doesn't intentionally exists on that website. Um, or if you get like a 500 error that has something to do with a server, or you might not have like access to access that specific server. So um, that could be a whole video in itself. Either way, uh, when if you have a response 200, that means likely that your, um, your request worked. So now um, let's see what info that this gives us or what uh, data we have access to once we have our response. So we're going to run this again, and I'm going to say response.text. So what this does, if once we press play, is uh, it's basically a gigantic string object containing every single line of HTML that is on the web page that you searched. Now, you may run into issues if you're searching a web page that uses Vue or React or something, um, because that is dynamically generated. So for sites that are either um, uh, that typically do like server requests or like if your page refreshes on every page, those are going to be much easier to scrape than websites that are dynamically generated like Facebook or um, I mean, even my website at the moment. So if we go to ZachPlochet.com. So I use Vue to build my website. So once we're here, um, you'll notice when I click on something, the page does not actually reload. Uh, let's see, give it a second. And so if we click here, all it does is it just instantly goes to the next page. Um, so yeah, it's pretty quick. Let's see, if we go to contact, like even this page, 
is just an under construction page. There's still no loading. Um, so unfortunately, when I scrape my web page, uh, it won't show all of the details like it will on Steam's website. Uh, if I built a normal Django site without like uh, without using a front end framework, then that would be we would be able to scrape it. But unfortunately, we are not. <laughs> so um, let's see here. So now that we have our response and we're able to see its dot text and also I believe we can also access the JSON if this page even has JSON. Let's see. Um, but -ba 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 boom. OK, not really okay so the like some pages have json this one does not uh so now that we have our response we can actually get into the web scraping so to do this um we're going to import the bs4 uh, package and we're going to say from bs4 import beautiful soup uh, so the difference between what requests and bs4 does is um Essentially, request is just for getting the information from the website, and beautiful soup is actually a parser, which means that um, it's actually able to take all of your HTML and uh, essentially you'll be able to search through it like a um, uh, like it's its own object. Uh, so normally, the syntax for this goes like so: so you get your URL, you get your response, and then once you have that response, you're able to say soup which you could almost just write as like HTML. So uh, we could also just say HTML for it to be easier, but typically people call this soup because uh, you're using the beautiful soup package. And um, yeah, essentially that's just what it's called typically. So uh, we're gonna have in here response.text. So we have our soup. And if we print this soup object, and uh, first we're also, and at, yeah, actually at the end, we're gonna say type and see what this soup is so we can see what type of an object it is. So like this separation on a new line. So let's see what our result is. We all right, cool. So um, the class that this is, is a BS4 beautiful soup class. And um, yeah, here's all the HTML, except it's much better formatted than when we just say response.txt. Uh, now, um, whereas response.txt is just purely a gigantic string, now we have access, uh, we're able to search our HTML using this soup object. So for example, to find the things that you're wanting to scrape, you're going to go to your browser, you're going to right click on the page and click the inspect button. Uh, your developer tools should open and you'll be able to see on the elements tab in most Chromium browsers, um, and uh, yeah, you'll be able to see the different HTML elements. Now, this it does help a lot if you know HTML and CSS and ideally JavaScript already, but definitely HTML and CSS um, because you'll understand like what different objects are. So if you want to find a specific piece of data, um, all you have to do is click on this little part up here. So select an element in the page to inspect it or press Control Shift C. So if you click this guy, and you hover your mouse over here, as you can see, these different parts of your web page highlights, or they highlight. Um, so if you if you hover over some piece of information, like let's say, I don't know, sneak attack Zach. So yeah, uh, as you can see at the uh, right below where my mouse is, it says span dot actual persona name. And inside of this tag, so span class actual persona name is my name or my Steam name, sneak attack Zach. If we click right below here, we can see that in a BDI tag is my actual name. And uh, right after this, oh, that's funny. You can even get the profile flag. Um, let's see. So we can also highlight the HTML and try to get the specific data inside of here. Uh, let's see. So we have that. We have this text here. And um, Okay, so this is all inside of a div. We can just get the div here. Um, hmm. Okay, so let's first get the name up here. So inside of our text or inside of our uh, uh, Python file, we're going to say the following. So now that we have our soup, which again, you could probably call HTML and not be too bad off. Um, 
So we're going to call it HTML for now, even though uh, typically you'll see this called soup. And uh, I do normally use soup as well. So uh, we're going to say HTML.find. So first, uh, yeah, so the soup object, OK, we'll go back to soup. So the soup object, soup, um, has a method called find, where you're able to find a specific tag and ideally with specific attributes inside of it. So if we click on here, we see that this is a span tag. It says span, which is the type of tag it is. And if we look over here, where it highlights after you click on whatever you're highlighting over here, um, it'll highlight the code where this is in. Uh, so in this case, it's span. It's a span tag with a class of actual persona name. So to find that specific item, we're going to say find whatever the tag name is. And then um, as you can see up here, the argument is the name. So that's going to be the tag name. And then the attributes. Um, attributes is the second um, uh, argument that we're going to pass in here. So we're going to say uh, span and then we want to get the span tag that has a class of actual persona name. So, and we can say this to a variable. We're going to say steam name equals soup find span. Uh, yeah, find the span tag with the class of actual persona name, and then we're going to we're going to print the Steam name. Steam name, like so. Let's press play. Down here. Uh, okay, so right, and also, um, so as you can see, we just ran the file, and there was a warning, not an error. Uh, so the part that we actually printed is right here, where it says span class equals actual persona name. And uh, we got the entire tag itself. Now, um, what if we only want the text? So we run soup find, and we get that whole tag of the span with that as a class of actual persona name. Um, so now that we have this object, um, so this is more like steam name tag. All you have to do after this part is say, uh, oops, the name tag. And then we can just say dot text. And uh, also this error here. Uh, so let's see. Yeah, no parser was explicitly specified. Uh, so I'm using the best, uh, the best available HTML parser for the system, HTML parser. This usually isn't a problem, but if you run this code on another system or in a different virtual environment, it may differ or it may use a different uh, parser and behave differently. Uh, the code that caused this warning is on line 11 of the file, the file that we're in, main.py. Uh, to get rid of this warning, pass the additional argument features equals HTML parser to the beautiful soup constructor, which is true. So up here, we're just going to say parser, or uh, sorry, features equals HTML.parser. And that's all you have to do to fix that. Make sure your quotes are consistent with the rest of your file which we're using single quotes. Um, and uh, yeah, so now ideally all it should say is just sneak attack Zach here and we will press play once again. Boom, all right, so now we have this in a string data. Uh, so now we have uh, another way to write this is just adding dot text to the end here. And then we can change this back to steam name. So that's a simple version. Um, now, what if we want to get all of, uh, let's say we want to get multiple items um, of a specific type on the page. So let's say like we want to get every single link on a web page. How would we do that? So in HTML, if you don't already know, typically links, uh, hyperlinks to other pages are going to be inside of an A tag. So that's going to be, yeah, like as you can see, A dot menu item, menu item, super nav, uh, super nav, even the well, uh, typically that's also clickable, um, but uh, let's see. Yeah, there, there's quite a few links. So like the install Steam button, login, language, all of that stuff. So what if you just want, I don't know, um, let's say at first, let's find all the A tags and then we'll, we will get all of the links from this page. Uh, so to do that, so we already have our Steam name now. 
let's go ahead and say, um, let's see, all links equals, we're going to say soup dot find underscore all. And then we're going to say, we want to find all of the A tags because A tags typically represent links. And if we print all links, like so, let's see what we get. So I'm going to print here. Okay. Okay, so this was technically accurate. Um, I am curious. So if I say um, type or uh, print the type of all links here, run it again. Okay, so it's still a l group of BS4 elements. All right, so I did this wrong. I meant to say print star all links here. And let's run this again and let's see what we got. All right, yeah, so that is a lot of links. All right, so now that we have all of the links, um, let's go ahead and try to get all of the actual URLs attached to these A tags. So we're going to say for link in all links, like so. Oops, yeah. Uh, we're going to say, um, do to do to do, print link and get the href attribute out of here. So we're gonna press play now. We're gonna run this and see what we return. All right, so, boom. Yeah, now we have an entire list of links on this web page that we can easily access. And um, yeah, so that's pretty cool. Uh, let's say you wanna get like, um, I don't know, let's go here. What else can we grab from this page? So we can access the level if we want. We can also access our name here. So to access a person's real name, so if we say real name, that's going to equal soup, or uh, yeah, the way we get that is going to be in our case here. Um, and so this one I actually know because I was scraping Steam before like this. And um, all we have to write here, there's only one BDI tag on this whole page. So uh, it's actually pretty easy to get. So if we don't print this anymore, and we just say print, uh, also let's add dot text here, uh, print real underscore name. So soup dot find BDI dot text is equal to the real name on this specific URL. Uh, so let's go ahead and run this. So uh, up here, let's run it. All right, yeah, so now we have my real name. And uh, honestly, like that's most of it because, because at this point you're already able to, um, like you're are already getting all the links and stuff here. So yeah, I, I mean, essentially like that's all web scraping is, is just getting different elements from the from a web page. And uh, these packages right here are the quickest way in order to do a simple web scraping software uh, or have a simple web scraping script from my experience. Like uh, there are a ton of ways to optimize this. Like if you want to put this in a dictionary, you could and just build like your own, I don't know. In our case, it could be like a Steam profile object or something like this. Um, it's actually, yeah, it's really not that hard once you get uh, used to it because like it's the same process over and over and over again. <laughs> um, it does get a bit more complicated once you get into scraping JavaScript stuff. And that is a tutorial for another day, but it does involve using Selenium if you're curious. Um, and maybe there are, there are other packages. I just don't know that yet. Uh, so that is the basic tutorial on how to web scrape. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like the content, subscribe and bye for now.